Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of Easy SAP ABOP. So, did you know that ABOP is a Turing complete language? So, any program that we can write, any computation that can be done, we can do in ABOP. And those of you that have worked in ABOP for a long time are probably saying, yeah, right. I've, I've seen the limitations of ABOP, I've seen what we can do. But there is one kind of neat feature that kind of helps you achieve even more so that Turing completeness and the ability to really do anything in SAP. And that is the transaction code SM69. So SM69 is one of my personal favorites. I don't use it all that often, but sometimes when I have to use it, it, it really helps solve plenty of issues. So SM69 lets you invoke a command on the actual application server. So an operating system command. You can think of like your standard built-in command line utilities, either on Windows or on Linux. Or you can invoke external programming languages. You can call executable files. You can, uh, like I say, you can fire up a Java or a Python program and then get the result back in ABOP. So let's take a look real quick at transaction SM69. I'll show you how to set one up, and then I'll show you how to call it from ABOP code. So I'm going into transaction SM69. We see some predefined ones by SAP here that already exist. We can actually reuse some of these if we know what they mean and you know, know what they do, but we're going to create our own external command. So we're going to actually create it in the customer namespace. The command name is going to start with Z. So we'll go to this icon here, create. We have to give it a name. Now this is just the name we're going to use to call it from the ABOP code. It can be anything, but it, it must start in the customer namespace, you know, Z um, or Y. So I'll say in here, Z underscore print IP ADDR. So the operating system command, let me pull up the application server. I'm pulling up a terminal right now on the application server. This is the terminal on the actual application server that is running my SAP instance. And let's say I want to print my IP address of the application server. I want the IPv4, IPv6, loopback, all that stuff. So there is a program, if we look in our bin directory, called IP and we can call it by saying IP or we can call it by giving it our fully qualified path to it slash bin slash IP and it'll print out the usage so this could be any command it doesn't necessarily have to be IP this is just for the sake of showing you guys so let's just call slash bin slash IP and pass the address parameter so now I see I get my loop back, my link local, all, all my different networky fun stuff that you network guys understand better than I do. So all my IP addresses, everything I need there. So say I wanted to call this IP with the address parameter from an ABOP program. Well, there's no way just to say execute this, but we can use external operating system commands. Just define it in transaction SM69, Z underscore print underscore IP address. Our operating system command is going to be the path to the executable, which I showed you just now in my Linux terminal, is slash bin slash IP. We can say here if we want a, a parameter to be defined every time this is called, and we can also say additional parameters allowed. Additional parameters allow us to actually define those parameters within the ABOP code. In this case, I'm not going to do that, but I'll go over how that's done. So I'll say parameters here is address. And then I'll just leave this unchecked, additional parameters allowed. So this means, and it's also safer this way because you can't pass weird dynamic parameters to operating system commands, but we'll just leave it like this to start with. So I've saved this. I can see it was created and changed by me. I can, from here, do execute, or I can back out. I can look at it now in the list. I can see it's a customer. Let's take a look at this. Type. It's a customer command. That's the name of the command that we defined again earlier. It's applicable to the Linux OS. That's the actual name of the external program we're calling. And that is the parameter that's getting passed. So we just have a few more metadata things. This is if additional parameters are allowed. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, we can transport this across our landscape. So if I click transport, it's going to prompt me for a transport request. I'm not going to transport this package because it's just going to stay, or this command because it's just going to stay in our local development system. But if I want to test it, I can highlight it and come right here to this execute button. So at this point, it's not going to give me an option to put any additional parameters in because I uh, didn't select that checkbox on the previous screen. We can choose what host we want to execute it on. I'm just going to say the current, you know, current application server host. 
We can run it as a background job if it's going to be a long-running external command. Think like your monthly data extracts or something like that. And then we can execute it in the foreground, which this is going to take one second. So I'm just going to execute it in the foreground. So I executed it in the foreground. I see my return code, zero. Um, we don't have any sort of trace or exit statuses. So this means the command was successful. And I see here, printed out, this is the standard output from that command, printed out here which if I go back to my application server's terminal, I can see it's the same output that I would have received if I were to execute this command directly from the application server. So that's pretty nifty. You can execute, like I say, any command. You, a lot of people do Python scripts, things like that, or just built-in operating system commands like we did here with our IP program, which is a standard Linux program. You'll find that on pretty well most every flavor of Unix or Linux that I've seen that I'm working with currently. So how do we execute this through an ABAP program? Because it's all fine and good to be able to execute it from the UI here, but we don't really want to give users access to come in here and execute any of these. I mean, there's probably some slightly dangerous things in here that SAP has already got predefined, like you know, creating SQL backups, whatever we got going on out here. So the answer is there is a function module so let's go ahead and write this program well actually let's look at the function module itself first let me not get ahead of myself so in my session here i'm going to go to se37 which is function builder and we're going to take a look at this command sxpg underscore command underscore execute we can display the function module check out its attributes we see it back in 2009, SAP released this, so we as customers can use this function module knowing that it's supported by SAP and there is documentation available for it. If we click on function module documentation, we see a whole host of good reading material here that I'll let you guys go through on your own system so I'm not just making this video unnecessarily bloated. This basically tells you the parameters. You can click on the parameter names um, and it'll give you, you know, information about those parameter names. We can go ahead and run a test through here if we wanted to. But we don't have to do that. We can actually get out. We can actually execute this right through our ABOP code. I'm going to click here, pattern, so I can get this SXPG command execute call function. It'll give me the function signature. And I can give it my name of my operating system command, which was zprint IP address. I'm just going to call it just like that. I'm going to leave all these optional parameters and I'm going to handle this error. And then I'm going to add a little else clause so we can see if our operating system command was successful. And I'm just going to go ahead and activate this code. And then we're going to run it and we're going to see what happens. So I see down here my message printed out because we did not have a sub RC of, zero, of anything other than zero. So our command was successful. Now you say that's all fine and good, but what if I want to handle some of these return parameters? So I can say give me standard out, which is by default set to X, so I'll opt true. And then this return table here, exec underscore protocol, I'm pretty sure, is where we'd actually get the results of our function module. Oh, I can't do inline data declarations there. I'm still learning that syntax, guys, by the way. <laughs> so bear with me. We'll actually have to define a variable before we call this function module. So I'm, every day I'm generally working in a non S4 system where I don't have access to this fancy data declaration in line. So I'm still working out the syntax for that. But let's call it the old school way. So LT exec. So basically this is going to give us this return table. So I've just put a breakpoint in here so we can inspect this. So what that's going to do, once I activate it and run it, it's going to stop the debugger right after our command was successful. I can double click on LT exec. 
and double click here and I can actually see the lines of that internal table that it does return to us so we're gonna let that pop up and I can see my output here and that is the standard out that we would get if we were to run the command directly on the application server itself so for you oboppers out there for you non oboppers that might want to run you know you basis guys that want to run an occasional command when you might want to run it directly from the SAP GUI especially if it's something that takes the same parameters every time and you, you know you're doing all that this is a really great function module and SM69 is a great transaction code to know and learn um, like I said, we didn't really allow additional parameters in our zprint IP address, but if we did, say for example, we, let's see here, let me quit debugging this session right quick, it's actually debugging my, so if we did have right here, let me go into edit, I'll take out address here and I'll say additional parameters required and then save this command again. And now, if I go into my test program that I just wrote, I could uncomment additional parameters here and actually provide address as the parameter. So you can imagine this will let you dynamically do some things as well. So if you didn't know this additional parameter to this IP address command, you could define it at runtime through ABOP, and we get the same output here. So that's all fine and good. Let's do something... Let's just put some unknown parameter here that's going to cause it to have an issue. Run it again. And then since this standard out and standard error are both set to ABOP true, aka this X here, we're going to get the output from standard error and standard out. So we can see here this is unknown. Try IP help. So we're getting the standard output as well as a standard error from our operating system command. So this is really simple. I mean, you can go in here and use some of these additional parameters. Make sure you handle your exceptions here, guys. I'm not doing it for the sake of this video because I've used this function module about a thousand times. But, um, you know, this is a great way, like I said, to really help bridge that gap where there's something that the operating system does better or an external programming language does better than ABOP. You can go in and use that as opposed to to having to write your code in direct ABOP for where there may not be a suitable alternative for what you're trying to accomplish. So as always guys, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions at all about external operating system commands, SM69, transporting these commands, use cases, when to use these, when not to use these, you know, any of the questions at all, please feel free to leave a comment. My email is generally floating about the channel somewhere. I try not to type it out in the video descriptions because I already get enough spam, but you, I'm sure you can find it somewhere. So if you have any questions at all, please feel free to comment. If this video helped you, please like, please subscribe. It really helps me out. But as always, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video.